So now we'll move on to the final section of the meeting, which is evaluations. This is where we learn how we did on our speeches, what we can improve upon. And without further ado, I'll have the leader of the evaluation sections, Ryan. This is my favorite part of the meeting, the evaluations. So we'll have three people come down and evaluate the three speakers. And it's my favorite part because no matter how experienced you are in Toastmasters, we all can learn something and we all can take something from not only what the speakers did bad, but what they did good, and we can all improve from this. This is really what makes Toastmasters special. And so without further ado, here is Zach to evaluate Tyler's 15 to 20 minute speech. Hopefully his evaluation will not also be 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> Zach Hargis. No promises, Ryan. So, Tyler, first time giving a speech that long, right? See. All right, so there is an interesting dynamic when you go from five to seven or four to six, like the other two speakers, to 15 to 20. And that dynamic is, uh, crap, what do I say next? And I think that's going to be the next five minutes, so uh, I need to remember what I need to talk about. And unfortunately, there was a incident where uh, you couldn't have the entire speech prepared before, or fully prepared before the uh, time of delivery. So you had a booklet out, of course, I mean, you know, I know that's not something you need to do, especially on a speech that far in, um, since you've already accomplished competent communicator. Uh, I'm not going to berate you on this point because you already know. So let's talk about stuff that you did well and that you can improve on on this speech. Your goal here is to motivate us. I'm not going to ask who, uh, raise your hand if you were motivated that your life has changed. From this day forward, you're always going to live by those four rules because, realistically, you might feel motivated right now. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that was a motivating speech. But I would be, I feel like that was a motivating speech that could be a lot better with a little bit more, just a small bit more improvements on your delivery. I felt that you controlled this spot on the stage. And I agree that you should have stayed in this spot because you conveyed your information to the entire audience effectively just standing here. In fact, moving around while talking about stuff that's, you know, kind of serious, kind of dramatic, so life-threatening in some cases, isn't exactly great if you're walking over here and turning around and walking over here. Staying in one spot is a good idea. And you had the hand motions to match. The only thing that I saw that's different is that you maintained this exact voice level the entire speech. There might be like some one or two cases where you lowered your voice to this level, but it was really this level and this level that you stayed at. You never get louder than this, you never get quieter than this. And you could do something crazy. You could get louder and get people's attention. Even FR looked at me when I did that, and you could have quieted it down so that you could barely had a whisper. That gets your audience's attention. That gets them wondering, what are you going to do next? Your labeling of the 18,000 was going to be an amazing ending to your speech, and I'm sorry I'm already over time, but if you just reference that at the end, instead of saying, I'll see you at the top, pointing back to the name of your speech and thing that is sticking out on this whiteboard saying, what are you going to do with these 18,000? Would have been an amazing ending to an amazing speech that will get into the thought processes of every single person here. With that said, you had an amazing speech, and I'm glad that you gave it. Thank you. Great job, Zach. Keep in mind, you'll be voting for best evaluator, so uh, pay attention. Hope you learned something in this part. Next up, we have 
Trisha evaluating the speech of F.R. Saliwala. So, Trisha. F.R. Great job for your first table talk. Uh, not table talk. For, for your first speech within Toastmasters. I apologize, I can't impress you with saying your full name, but I can give you an evaluation of your speech. So, first off, coming down the stage and coming right up here, I noticed your energy and just the way that you held yourself, your shoulders back, relaxed stance, but also confident in the way you were setting yourself and you were grounded within the stage. And that was a really great start. I also liked how you were upfront about what you were going to talk about and you listed out three points that you were going to touch on. But I felt like with the stage and like using this table as a backdrop, perhaps like moving like first point over here, second point, then you switch. Third point, then you move again, and then coming back as a resolution. Just as a way to already use like the physical presence you have to your advantage to ad advance your point. So that was one thing I noticed. Another point with, I believe, oh yes. Um, so like again, with that energy with people, I, I know like looking at the timing, it's like a little bit off focus, and I could see like, like you, you mentally paused, but then when you, verbally mentioned it, it took away some of the audience attention from the message you were trying to convey. And then like the audience is now like, oh, oh, the time, oh, he mentioned the time, oh, okay. And it slightly distracts the focus from the message you're trying to make. In addition to that, um, I felt like you could also, you had a good pace, but there I felt like there were some times where you were a little bit stumbling over your words. So maybe taking a, a second to Stop, read, maybe like if when you're introducing your points, like say the point and then like give it a pause to add that effect because while we do think about the words as a way to communicate, silence can also be another tool to really convey your point. Um, but overall, I did like, I noticed how you used the word of the day. Um, so really great, especially with the speech you've already prepared, adapting to the situation and including that. I really liked your energy and I look forward to hearing your next speech. Thank you. Great job, that was good. <clears throat> so, for the last evaluation, I first want to say uh, congratulations to Jose, he did a great job. But beyond that, I think we all have imperfections or something in our lives that um, we wish we could improve on. And some people are more obvious than others. So I have a lot of respect for somebody with the courage of Jose to come out here and do things with so many other people aren't uh, with a stutter. And he's here exposing himself, being vulnerable in front of everybody. And um, not everybody knows that he's, he's here working except for us. So uh, I want to uh, give a round of applause to Slate Nations for evaluating him, but also Jose for doing a great job. I'm a valiant Jose Reyes, and I just want to really reiterate what he said that it's, it's really just really courageous when you come up here and he was just start kind of jump right into what I thought was really great too is that she was insanely confident when she came up here, Jose, and it just I saw no like nervousness, honestly. Like, I think, like, so, and then also a thing to improve on is probably eye contact. So, I know I personally do this too. What I noticed was like looking up type of or just you know looking away. So you had like a good balance. You like had eye contact throughout the speech later on. Definitely in the beginning you're kind of looking up thinking about what you're going to say. So that was definitely, it's a good technique. So I just recommend finding other techniques like not necessarily fidgeting but you know maybe having something in your hands just to mess around with. And then another improvement is personally I think for this speech my recommendation is maybe try walking around a little. So not obviously like pacing sort of like too much, but you know, just I think it'd be good recommendation to sort of try that. And then, then on the flip side, something you did really great though is I thought you were really good with your gestures. That I think was, showed your points and I think that was really good when you're speaking. And then also I think you did really great was just your speech in general. Your speech overall is content was amazing. I just love the, you had the intro about it's just this different perspective on like this, uh, this situation. Overall, I love all the three stories you gave, like the story about the girl you met and the and the bar situation. It was kind of like had a, you know it was kind of funny one too, and then also really just development on that perspective. You know, it's a, a reality. And then back going 
kind of get to the beginning of what I said and just pretty greatly know you're coming here to improve. And so yeah, and then just to wrap it up, uh, yeah, just that's perspective again of this GA character you mentioned. And yeah, and the last tip is always practice, practice makes perfect, really does. So I think all those things I mentioned to improve on, it just comes with practice. So yeah, you did a great job. Great job, Slate. Thank you so much. So now I get to evaluate the meeting as a whole. As the general evaluator, to start, we uh, enjoyed Tyler's speech. I just want to point out if you guys come in late, uh, try to wait till the next pause, just so you don't interrupt anybody. Tyler did a good job of handling it, even applauding as certain people came in uh, at that certain part of the speech. Tyler, great job as always. Since you are president, I will watch what I say about your Toastmaster abilities, <laughs> but great job. One thing is uh, I didn't have enough time to write feedback for the speakers, so maybe a little more time. Otherwise, great job. The speeches went well. Nadia, as table topics, thank you for calling me out as I was taking notes on the meeting as general evaluator. Yeah, no problem. And now I get to evaluate you. So no, you did a great job. <laughs> I loved your theme. Great questions and um, kind of balance between asking people. However, you did ask a speaker, uh, the general evaluator, and uh, another evaluator. Then uh, there were some newer people who okay, didn't speak. Okay, there were so. names for each vote. So he raised his hand, and you weren't paying attention to me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, good job. I loved your theme. You did good. <laughs> um, also, you wrote the uh, names kind of small. But that's okay. You did a good job. Don't worry. I'm a fan. Finally, uh, the evaluations, evaluators, y'all did good. Zach, uh, your consistent, experienced speaker, you somehow always find a way to raise your voice in your speeches. I don't know why. <laughs> Every time I hear you speak, you love to get very loud. Um, there you go. Uh, you also meant, said, sorry, I'm out of time, which is something uh, I'm not a fan of. Just like uh, consider the audience. They don't really care that you're out of time. You just got to. Trisha, good job. I liked your evaluation. You had, you had a very thoughtful um, consideration of the speaker. You, had, you made some good points. I would like to challenge you to take your evaluation to the next step by thinking of it, thinking of it as a mini speech and kind of structuring it in a way like with an introduction, saying what you're going to say, and concluding with some line. A lot of times people get into this rut of uh, listing, kind of this is what happened. In Slate 2, you, know, you just kind of, kind of list it, which is a fine evaluation, but to take your, uh, it's, a ch it's a chance to speak and get better and improve on your structure and things. And I think evaluations are cool because you're kind of writing a speech in the middle of the, the Toastmasters meeting, so it's difficult, but y'all did a great job. Sleep, good job. Um, you're improving, you're doing great. Uh, again, come to the center of the stage, you're, you're right here behind the table, kind of using it as a crutch. A lot of things you don't notice, um, but you know, always improve, it's an easy one. Um, and watch your filler words. But you did a great job you know, with positive and negative feedback for Jose. So that concludes the evaluation portion. I'd like to welcome Tyler, the Toastmaster, back up to the stage. All right. All right. That's the evaluator. All right. Timer, were all the evaluators in time? Uh, Zach was 14 seconds over Grace. Over Grace? All right, so if you haven't already, please vote for the best evaluator. Unfortunately, can I include Zach because he went over time? So between Slate and Trisha, and then pass it into the middle. In the meantime, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. It's a pretty good crowd. And also, we're making pretty good time having a long speech and also having a lot of table topic questions. So, it's been good. And I'll actually transition from Toastmaster Day to announcements. Yes, I'll also have this with you. <laughs> Can we have the grammarian give his report? Okay, starting off uh, with the speakers, I noticed some run-ons. That was like the main problem. And Jose, at one point, I thought you said way more hard. Is that right? I can't think of the correct way to say it at the moment. Now that hard. I'm hard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, for the evaluation, Zach, I didn't hear any like run-ons or anything, but I did 
see, I did hear you said, with just a small bit more improvements, with just a little bit, with just more improvements, not a small bit more improvements. There you go. And Trisha, I noticed you would start a sentence, and then you would restart it once you thought of exactly what you want to say or how you wanted to articulate it. And this is a problem I come across that I come that happens to me too, like right now. So one way is just take a second to really think about what you're going to say next and then start. So that way you don't need to keep restarting. But other than that, great job. And then Slate, I'm going to do you. And then Serena, can you give us the Ocarina report? Yeah. So just to start off the section, I just want to encourage you guys to not view this, these numbers as criticism or as roasts, but see them as challenges for the next time you do, or trying to keep in mind what filters you're using. So you, sometimes some people will write down the number of filters that they use and really notice what specific filters their language tends to go towards, so that way next time they can keep in mind those filters so they don't use them. So with that, I'll start in chronological order. And Tyler Burnett, you use so three times and and eight times. And when I say and, obviously I don't mean and in between the two independent clauses. I mean starting the sentence with the word and. For fr, you said like one time. Jose, you said um twice, like twice, and uh twice. Slate had one uh, three likes, and one and so. Claudia, two ums, one like. Nasir, three ums, four likes, three no's. Brian, you did great. Tyler Burnett, for um, during your table topics, one like, two um. Andrea, seven ums, one like. Ethan, one so, one um. Zach said I had four ands. Jalen, three likes. Zach, one uh. Trisha, one and, five likes, two ums. Slate, um, six likes, three no's, one uh. Brian, Eight buzz, nine ums, and one you know. All right. I jumped the gun a little bit. But that now concludes the main section of the meeting.